Now that you have learned the five steps in the SQ3R method, how will you apply them as you read? In this video, you will view a demonstration of how this method is applied to the type of reading you might encounter in a course textbook. I'll focus on the first three steps in the method, surveying the chapter, formulating questions, and reading to find key information. Today I'm going to read a chapter in an organizational behavior textbook on need-based theories of motivation. The same principles would apply to reading in other courses. My first step is to survey. I'll skim the chapter quickly to get the main idea. The first place I will begin is with the learning objectives. As in most textbooks, these are located at the beginning of the chapter. I'll read these carefully to find out the main concepts I will learn by reading. The next part of the chapter I'll review is the key takeaways at the end of the chapter. Remember, there's no rule that says that I need to read everything in order. By reading the key takeaways first, I gain a sense of the most important information in the chapter. This will help me to focus my reading later. Now, I'll go back to the beginning of the chapter and briefly skim the concepts. I'll look at key headings, as well as key diagrams that seem to have important information. In this chapter, I notice a diagram for Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the ERG theory. As I skim further, I also notice a heading for the two-factor theory and the acquired needs theory. From the information I've gained in the survey step, I've determined that my goals for reading are to be able to describe the four theories of motivation, to identify how these theories are similar and different, and to understand how each theory explains employee behavior. My next step is to begin questioning and reading. I'll base my questions on key headings I notice. The first heading I read is Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. What questions can I ask about this? You may want to pause this video here and try to create three or four questions you might want to ask. Then, resume the video to see how the questioning process works. Here are the questions I've developed. What is Maslow's hierarchy of needs? What are the levels in Maslow's hierarchy? Why are there different levels in the hierarchy? And how does Maslow's theory explain employee behavior? I've added these questions to my note-taking page. I begin reading to look for the answer to my first question. I find the answer here in the first paragraph. The theory is based on a simple premise. Human beings have needs that are hierarchically ranked. There are some needs that are basic to all human beings, and in their absence, nothing else matters. As we satisfy these basic needs, we start looking to satisfy higher order needs. Now, I want to add this information to my notes. To get the most benefit of this step, I will recite the information in my own words, then write it down. The step of putting information into my own words ensures that I understand it clearly. I pause and think about how I can express what I've read in my own words. I think I can say it like this. Maslow's theory states that everyone has levels, a hierarchy of needs. When our basic needs are met, we move to fulfill our higher levels of need. I'll add this information to my notes now. You will notice that, that I've left a wide margin on my note-taking page. This space allows me to add additional thoughts, images, and questions about the material later on. I may want to add additional information I learn in class. I'll move through the same steps to answer my other three questions. You may want to pause this video here and try these steps out for yourself. As I'm reading, I will also take note of key terms in bold letters. For example, I see that physiological needs is a key term in this chapter. These are words I want to be able to define as they are important to my understanding of the course material. I will work through the chapter following the same steps for each main chapter section, create questions, read to find the answers, recite my answer, and write it in my notes in my own words. Now that you have seen how the SQ3R method might be applied to a textbook chapter, try it. 
Notice how this changes your reading process. How do you want to use this information to read in the future? 